Welcome to August Leco Challenge. Today's problem is rotting oranges. In a given grid, each cell can have one of three values. Zero representing an empty cell, one representing a fresh orange, and two representing a rotten orange. Every minute, any fresh orange that is adjacent to a rotten orange becomes rotten. Return the minimum number of minutes that must elapse until no cell has a fresh orange. If impossible, return negative one instead. We're given in this example, we have one rotten orange here. After a minute, that these two adjacent to the rotten orange turn rotten. After two, all these other oranges also turn rotten, and so on and so forth. Initially, you might think we could probably do this recursively, but there are some problems with this um, with this leak code problem. Like, it's tricky because basically we have this initial state at every minute, and if we were to make updates to the grid, we have to do that one at a time, but that messes it up because at the next minute, if we were to say, hey, change these to rotten, and then we check for the next orange, now that we've updated it to make it rotten, we're going to update these oranges as well, but another minute hasn't elapsed. So how could we store this original state while making these updates without causing um, next stages to occur, next changes to occur? Uh, one way you can do that is to use a temporary object, you know, create a copy of this grid and make up updates to that copy. And once the minute has elapsed, once we've checked every single cell, then we update the original grid with our copy and so on. And we can just continue that. So that's going to be my first approach. Uh, what we're going to do essentially is count the number of fresh oranges. We will go through every single cell and update all the fresh oranges that are next to a rotten orange on some sort of temporary object. If we've reached the end and found that uh, there are still fresh oranges, then we will replace that original grid with our temporary object and continue the loop. And we'll just continue that until we see that we haven't been able to decrease the number of fresh oranges. And if there's still fresh oranges, we re return negative one, right? Otherwise, we return the number of minutes that have elapsed. So that's the tricky part because it's kind of hard to do call by values in Python. Um, one of the tricky things about it is when you create a, just do a normal like object equals object two, uh, everything that's immutable is actually still a call by reference. So you're gonna have to make a deep copy of it. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So here's what we'll do. We'll first count all the fresh oranges. Okay, so to do that, uh, let's first initialize fresh as zero. And we'll also initialize m equaling the length of grid and n equaling the length of grid column zero. All right, so the first thing we want to do is count all these fresh oranges. So for i in range of n, oh, I'm sorry, m, and for j in range of n, We'll check if grid uh, equals one, that's a fresh orange, we will increment our fresh orange by one. And that'll be it. So now we have the number of fresh oranges we have. Okay, so let's initialize a couple more variables, number of minutes that have passed, and we'll also store previous to equal the fresh. And what this is gonna allow us to do is check to see at every loop if we've been able to decrease the number of fresh oranges. Because if we haven't, if we've made no change to the state, then we should break out of this loop. So I'm going to do a while true loop here for now. And um, because we don't know how many times it's going gonna, it's gonna to elapse. And we'll break out of it when we haven't been able to decrease the number of fresh oranges. OK. So the first thing we want to do is make a copy, right? And to do that, you can use the the deep copy method from Python. It's the only way I know how to do it uh, without weird things happening. So what we'll do is create a copy of the grid. And now we'll check every single cell inside of our grid. For, so for, it'll be the same thing for i in range of like m, for j in range of n. And the only thing we care about is when 
the orange is rotten, right? Like we're going through each one of these cells and what we'll do is if it's rotten, we'll make updates to all the adjacent cells. We'll make sure that's in bounds. And if it's a fresh orange, we'll update that to a rotten. But the key here is to make sure to make this change to our copy object, not the original grid itself. Because if we did that, the next time we move, we might end up making more changes that we shouldn't have at this minute. All right, so, so for if the grid i.j is rotten, that's two, then what are we gonna do? Well, we'll have to check up, down, left, right, right? So uh, that's a little bit tricky. What we'll do is do another for loop. We'll say for rc in, and we'll create a list of the four directions. We'll do that um, by creating four tuples. Say i minus one j, uh, then we'll do i plus one j, we'll do i j minus one, and i j plus one. So that's a lot of loops, but this is only four, so uh, that's not going to be too bad. And basically, if we got to first make sure we're in bounds, if we're greater or equal to zero and less than what's row, so um, for m and zero equal to c is less than n, and we're going to check our copy object, not our grid. Because remember, we have to um, uh, make sure that we're only checking for the changes that we made in our temporary object, right? So uh, check to see if, our, if this thing is a fresh orange, then we want to update our temporary object to a rotten orange. And we also want to dec decrement the number of fresh oranges. We want to make sure that we say, okay, there's one less fresh orange. All right, so that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. Um, once we have done with that, now we want to check to see if we've been able to make changes. Like, have we been able to decrease the number of fresh oranges? So if previous, um, well, yeah, if previous equals fresh, we haven't been able to make any changes, let's break out of our loop. Otherwise, we've made changes. So let's first increment our minute by one. Let's... Um, Make sure to make our grid now equal to the, the copy object. And also make our, sure our previous is equal to fresh so that we can continue checking this. So once that's finished, uh, now we should have the number of fresh oranges that we have left and the number of minutes that have elapsed, right? So the first thing is, well, if the number of fresh oranges is still greater than zero, then we turn negative one because we haven't been able to make all the oranges rotten. Otherwise, just return minutes because otherwise we've made all the fresh oranges rotten. So just return the number of minutes that have elapsed. So let's make sure this works. Uh, didn't work. Why didn't this work? Uh, let's see. Runs. <clears throat> uh, to be honest, I'm not sure why this didn't work. It should have worked. Well, let's see. What am I missing up here? How many fresh and how many minutes have passed? Let's see. Okay, so we break broke immediately. That's not good. Hmm. Oh, okay, I see. See, there's silly typos like this. <sighs> okay, there we go. So I made I a J instead. So let's go ahead and submit that. 
and there we go, accepted. All right, so this was my approach, and one way you could optimize this is to not use this deep copy object because we are using extra memory doing this, um, and we're also doing some unnecessary calls because all we care about here is the the grid numbers where the oranges are rotten, right? We don't really care about the empty ones or even the fresh ones at that at that point. So why why even check them? So one way to optimize this is to forget about this whole deep copy thing and instead use a queue. We can think of it like a breadth first search where we're only going to, we'll, we'll, we'll store the representative state inside the queue itself. That way, when we make these updates, like the number of minutes that have elapsed is inside the queue. And when we're making changes to our original grid, we'll still remember like how it looked originally because we'll have that information inside of our our queue instead. Okay, so we can do that. Let's make a queue and we'll use a queue object. And what we'll do is say if grid that ij, if it's a rotten orange, let's add that to our queue. So how do we do that? Uh, let's just pin to our queue. We'll put a tuple of the i, the j, and the number of minutes have elapsed. And so far, that should be zero. So we'll only do this when it equals a rotten orange. And now we have our queue. So rather than using this while true, uh, we'll just say while there's a queue, forget this whole for copy and and frankly forget about this whole uh, nested for loop. What we'll do is we'll pop off our queue. We'll say, okay, queue pop left. And now we'll have what, um, I guess we'll pop it off by saying we'll have i, we'll have j, and we'll have number of minutes that have elapsed, right? So if the grid of i, j is equal to 2, then we're going to do this whole thing. And... What we'll do is update the grid only when it equals one. So we can do that and we can decrease our number of fresh oranges here. And we don't really need this previous fresh anymore because we have our queue to help us with that. Because what we'll do is just add it to our queue if all these conditions are met. So what we'll do then is say, okay, queue append. Uh, we'll still have the I and J. or the R and C rather, and we'll increase our minute by one. So that should actually be a lot simpler. Uh, we don't need any of those nested for, for loops, and we'll probably save a lot of time and memory doing this. So let me see, fresh, if it's greater than zero, still return negative one, and we can just return the minute because in our queue, since we're doing like a breath first search, the last one will be the num maximum number of minutes that should have elapsed. And we're only going to return negative one if we haven't been able to decrease all our fresh oranges. So let me see if this works. I may have messed something up here. Oop, okay. Append. Oh, make that a tuple. Okay, so that looks like it worked. Let me go ahead and submit it. And there we go, accepted. So this is probably the optimal solution. Now, my initial approach, it still wasn't that bad. You can see that it was still pretty fast. Um, but the problem was creating that temporary object is sort of cheating in a way. Using this queue, I think is, um, well, I'd be pretty impressed if somebody was able to come up with this. And, uh, you know, starting with that first approach, you can see how you can improve it slowly by realizing, oh, we're wasting time here or wasting space here and slowly realize like uh, other approaches to to solve the problem so i really hope that helps thank you for watching my channel and remember do not trust me i know nothing